really love what you're gonna get. Not like, oh, I'm gonna get it because everybody else is getting one. Welcome to Sideshow Tattoos and Piercings, and we're going to take a look around the shop. My Harishi is Rachel Tellis. Our first meeting was a two-hour conversation, and by the end of it, I knew that there was a bond forming, and I had found my artist. Rachel has been tattooing for most of her life, and has apprenticed in the United States under many prominent artists. She has learnt the American system, which is strictly enforced, as well as heavily focused on studying bloodborne pathogens. HIV and Hepatitis C are safety concerns that have plagued the credibility of the tattoo industry. So how do you get HIV or Hepatitis C from a tattoo? It's not even necessarily from a tattoo. You can catch hepatitis um, mainly in restaurants, in bathrooms. People not washing their hands through different like body fluids. If you have cut your finger and you touch a surface, it lives on a surface for 30 days. It will not die. That's why we use Biotex, which completely kills everything on a surface like immediately. So you, you, know, you can't contract that stuff because we're making sure that the surfaces and everything that we're using is completely thrown away and completely sprayed down to kill everything on a surface between every single client and used all through the shop on door handles, on our counters, on coffee tables, even, you know, you can catch it anywhere. But mainly bathrooms is like a really bad place, like through feces and urine and, you know, just... and then people not washing their hands and then touching the door handle to walk out of the bathroom always try and like use a paper towel to like turn it off like on a bathroom door because a lot of people like good 90 percent of people do not wash their hands this is the bathroom this is one customer bathroom right here where we have our, our sterilizer and antibacterial soap um, we have our hand washing signs up to make sure everybody's washing their hands properly a lot of people don't know there's actually a specific way to like wash your hands well being a tattoo artist different from other people but you want to start from like your wrists down and kind of like wash your hands down in between your fingers, tops and bottoms. Because there's bacteria and stuff that can actually build around your cuticles and your hands and your crevices. A lot of people don't know that. Hepatitis C is just one form of hepatitis. Hepatitis now runs A through K. So um, hepatitis A and B are treatable. And hepatitis C through K, you die from it. Unless you're going to the doctor for blood work and testing, you might not know that you have it for years. And then all of a sudden one day you become very, very ill and you go to the doctor and you're not knowing what's going on. So they test you and they say, hey, you have hepatitis. And by that point, it's usually too bad. When you show like major symptoms of hepatitis, it's usually like you have two weeks to live. So there's pretty much no cure for it, even if they find out at the early stages. It's not hepatitis that kills you. It's the failure of your liver and other organs and stuff in your body that kills you. Yes, you must wash your hands properly. Rachel is clearly meticulous about sterilization, which is an indication of her professionalism. So just how do standards differ between Canada and the U.S.? In the United States, everything is licensed through the state. You have to have a bloodborne pathogen certificate to be able to tattoo, which means you are completely trained in sterilization and cleanliness and making sure that you know like, how to prevent disease spread, how to protect yourself, how to protect, protect the client, how to protect the public, making sure that you know how to do things properly if you're going to own a shop or you're going to tattoo in this industry at a shop. Up here in Canada, there's nothing far as that. Um, there's no programs. You don't have to have a tattoo license. Um, Portland, Oregon, if you look at the guidelines for Portland, Oregon, they're extremely strict. They actually, you have to go to school for tattooing and it's basically a big sterilization it's basically like a giant nursing course and you can't actually learn to tattoo from there that you have to learn from somebody who is actually a professional who's been in the industry for a long time but as far as sterilization there's nothing up here that they make anyone do somebody could buy a crappy piece of machinery from ebay and start tattooing from their apartment there's no guidelines like for them to stop people. I mean, the health department can find out that you're tattooing, come in, and basically fine you, I guess, for um, you know, raw registering with them. There's like a ton of people tattooing out of apartments and houses that the health board doesn't know about. 
here, which I like to go through with new clients, this is about our bio room and our sterilization room so they don't have to like turn around and ask us questions or see all our papers and we keep our updated third party lab testing which we do once a month on the wall for them and they can look back and see like all the other ones from previously to make sure we're up to date, it says the sterilizers were working and functioning correctly. The health board only requires that we only have to do this. But um, we also go above and beyond by using chemical integrators, which we keep up here and explain to customers and stuff like that so they can have a full understanding, which I'll be showing you um, what an integrator is and what it does. The paper's up here about spore test kit, informational guide for them so they know what a spore test is and why we do it. We also use chemicals, biomers and biotex. On any tubes and that that we scrub, we actually submerge them all into the biomerced first before we even sterilize them. So it's killing everything on the tubes and that before it even gets sterilized. And then the Biotex, which is another chemical that we use on all our surfaces in between every customer. A complete information guide for the customer so they know exactly that we are completely sterile and that they're not going to catch anything on the shop. The health department only really requires that we do spore testing once a month as far as like cleaning stuff. I've researched like the best chemicals that I feel are the best chemicals out the market that are going to work the best. The integrators are not something that you have to use. I use that because um, I know without a doubt that somebody, that my sterilizer is working and somebody is not going to contract something, as well as the biomers is not something that they say that you have to use. The biomers and the integrators are just something that I like to use above and beyond. The requirements is just basically a third party lab test once a month. But my problem with that is, is if a sterilizer were to go down or something were to happen to it, which this world is not perfect and things like that can happen, how would you know? Your steamer could be working, but it might not reach the proper temperature that it's supposed to be reaching. And how would you know that? You wouldn't know that unless you're using integrators every single time. And that's why I can sleep at nighttime knowing that people are safe. I use the same equipment on myself as well as my husband. I know that if I'm not going to use it on myself, I'm definitely not going to use it on someone else. I know that before choosing a tattoo shop, you should check it out to make sure that it's clean and that the artist is always using a new needle. But when I go there, it looks clean and the artist is currently tattooing someone. So do I make a judgment call that this place is safe? Make sure when you walk into a shop that you're checking for the proper paperwork, that they are doing proper um, sterilization. As far as spore testing, we see if they're using integrators, just make sure that their sterilizer is working properly. Make sure they're up to date on all their paperwork. Absolutely make sure that they're you know carrying all the proper cleaning supplies that they're supposed to be cleaning. Make sure that the needles, razors, everything that they're using is completely brand new that they're hooked up with a bio-waste system, you need to be seeing these things, you know, make sure that they're not throwing them just in the garbage, and, you know, make sure that they're covering everything, just anything that you would, you know, that they're not using bare hands for a tattoo, like, you know, things that, you know, sterilization. 